Hello. Please hit like button and subscribe my channel. Also press bell icon for future video notifications. Thanks. The temporary breakdown of Earth's magnetic field 42,000 years ago sparked major climate shifts that led to global environmental change and mass extinctions, a new international study co-led by UNSW Sydney and the South Australian Museum shows. This dramatic turning point in Earth's history, laced with electrical storms, widespread auroras, and cosmic radiation, was triggered by the reversal of Earth's magnetic poles and changing solar winds. The researchers dubbed this danger period the Adams Transitional Geomagnetic Event, or Adams Event for short, a tribute to science fiction writer Douglas Adams, who wrote in The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy that 42 is the answer to life, the universe, and everything. The findings are published today in Science. For the first time ever, we have been able to precisely date the timing and environmental impacts of the last magnetic pole switch, says Chris Turney, a professor at UNSW Science and co-lead author of the study. The findings were made possible with ancient New Zealand cowrie trees, which have been preserved in sediments for over 40, 000 years. Using the ancient trees we could measure, and date. The spike in atmospheric radiocarbon levels caused by the collapse of Earth's magnetic field. While scientists already knew the magnetic poles temporarily flipped around 41 to 42,000 years ago, known as the last camp's excursion, they didn't know X. But the researchers were able to create a detailed timescale of how Earth's atmosphere changed over this time by analyzing rings on the ancient cowrie trees. The cowrie trees are like the Rosetta Stone, helping us tie together records of environmental change in caves, ice cores and peat bogs around the world, says co-lead Professor Alan Cooper, honorary researcher at the South Australian Museum. The researchers compared the newly created time scale with records from sites across the Pacific and used it in global climate modeling, finding that the growth of ice sheets and glaciers over North America and large shifts in major wind belts and tropical storm systems could be traced back to the one of their first clues was that megafauna across mainland Australia and Tasmania went through simultaneous extinctions 42,000 years ago. This had never seemed right, because it was long after Aboriginal people arrived, but around the same time that the Australian environment shifted to the current arid state, says Professor Cooper. The paper suggests that the Adams event could explain a lot of other evolutionary mysteries, like the extinction of Neanderthals and the sudden widespread appearance of figurative art in caves around the world. It's the most surprising and important discovery I've ever been involved in, says Professor Cooper. The perfect, cosmic, storm the magnetic North Pole, that is, the direction a compass needle points to, doesn't have a fixed location. It usually wobbles close to the North Pole, the northernmost point of Earth's axis, over time due to dynamic movements within the Earth's core, just like the magnetic South Pole. Sometimes, for reasons that aren't clear, the magnetic pole's movements can be more drastic. Around 41,000-42,000 years ago they swapped places entirely. The last camp's excursion was the last time the magnetic poles flipped, says Professor Turney. They swapped places for about 800 years before changing their minds and swapping back again. Until now, scientific research has focused on changes that happened while the magnetic poles were reversed, when the magnetic field was weakened to about 28% of its present-day strength. But according to the team's findings, the most dramatic part was the lead-up to the reversal, when the poles were migrating across the Earth. Earth's magnetic field dropped to only 0 to 6% strength during the Adams event, says Professor Turney. 
We essentially had no magnetic field at all, our cosmic radiation shield was totally gone. During the magnetic field breakdown, the Sun experienced several grand solar minima, GSM, long-term periods of quiet solar activity. Even though a GSM means less activity on the Sun's surface, the weakening of its magnetic field can mean more space weather, like solar flares and galactic cosmic rays, could head Earth's way. Unfiltered radiation from space ripped apart air particles in Earth's atmosphere, separating electrons and emitting light, a process called ionization, says Professor Turney. The ionized air fried the ozone layer, triggering a ripple of climate change across the globe. Into the cave's dazzling light shows would have been frequent in the sky during the Adams event. Aurora Borealis and Aurora Australis, also known as the Northern and Southern Lights, are caused by solar winds hitting the Earth's atmosphere. Usually confined to the polar northern and southern parts of the globe, the colorful sights would have been widespread during the breakdown of Earth's magnetic field. Early humans around the world would have seen amazing auroras, shimmering veils and sheets across the sky, says Professor Cooper. Ionized air, which is a great conductor for electricity, would have also increased the frequency of electrical storms. It must have seemed like the end of days, says Professor Cooper. The researchers theorize that the dramatic environmental changes may have caused early humans to seek more shelter. This could explain the sudden appearance of cave art around the world roughly 42,000 years ago. We think that the sharp increases in UV levels, particularly during solar flares, would suddenly make caves very valuable shelters, says Professor Cooper. The common cave art motif of red ochre handprints may signal it was being used as sunscreen a technique still used today by some groups. The amazing images created in the caves during this time have been preserved, while other art out in open areas has since eroded, making it appear that art suddenly starts 42,000 years ago. Uncovering ancient clues these findings come two years after a particularly important ancient cowrie tree. A massive tree, with a trunk spanning over two and a half meters, was alive during the last camps. Like other entombed cowrie logs, the wood of the NG, WH, tree is so well preserved that the bark is still attached, says UNSW's Dr. Jonathan Palmer, a specialist in dating tree rings, dendrochronology. Dr. Palmer studied cross-sections of the trees at UNSW Science's Kronos 14 Carbon Cycle Facility. Using radiocarbon dating, a technique to date ancient relics or events, the team tracked the changes in radiocarbon levels during the magnetic pole reversal. Please support our channel to grow by pressing subscribe button as well as the bell icon for environment updates. Thank you.